You are all charged with murder, contrary to section 203 of the Penal Code, chapter 63 of the Laws of Kenya, which provides that any person who of malice aforethought causes death of another person by an unlawful act or omission is guilty of murder. The facts are that on 2nd February, together with others not in this court, at Langata in Nairobi, caused the death of Tom Koko. How do you plead? Morris? Not guilty. Jomo? Not guilty. Okot? Not guilty. You face a second count of attempted murder, contrary to section 220 of the Penal Code, in that on the same date, the two of you, together with others, not before this court, attempted to unlawfully cause the death of Vojay David. How do you plead? Morris? Not guilty. Paul. Not guilty. Dennis. Not guilty. The third count is that on is that one of assault occasioning actual bodily harm, contrary to section 251 of the penal code, that on the said date you assaulted Voje David. How do you plead? Morris? Not guilty. Jomo? Not guilty. Okot? Not guilty. Very well. Who is uh, representing the uh, accused? Your Honor, they have no legal representation. I thought by now the state would have uh, provided a lawyer to defend me. There isn't one available at the moment. The designated counsel apparently has a conflict of interest. This case will not proceed without legal representation. I hereby Corona. send them. Yes, Ms. Arthur. I. Uh... I would like to offer myself as um, to represent the accused as uh, Pope Brief. Are you familiar with the case? Not at the moment, but um, <clears throat> the accused uh, need representation and I'm offering myself. Very well. You have been appointed as the legal counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, uh, I would like to set the hearing date on. Uh, uh, thank you. The third of next month. Uh, sorry, Your Honor, I have another date, uh, have another hearing set for that date. All right. The fifth. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I have my nephew's graduation in Eldoret. I will not be in town. The seventh. That will be fine with me, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Oh. I'll be in Nakuru at the time. Cancels. Now, if you continue like this, I'll set the hearing for next year. The tenth had better be good for both of you. Is it? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you, yes, Your Honor. Now, due to the nature of the charges, no bail is set. 
next case. Elsie, how are we doing today? Fine. I hear you want the kiss. <laughs> oh yes. Ten million in compensation. Congratulations. I knew we would win, but I uh, wasn't expecting that amount of money. Is that for me? Yes, it's a background research you asked for on Forex investment institutions in Kenya. Good. I took up a case in court today. The firm will handle it pro bono. Free? Marco is... Yes, we haven't handled such cases in a while. And besides, they didn't have legal representation, so I offered. It's a murder case, attempted murder and assault. Okay. Let me know when you need me. Thank you. I was in the boardroom. Oh, I brought you coffee and some cookies. Mm, it's kind of you. They're really good. Of course. You know, you keep on showing me a different side to you every day. And I'm beginning to think that I made the right decision to like you. Well, there's so much more to me than meets the eye. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I'm learning, yeah? Mm. You should have your coffee before it gets cold. Joe, may I have the file of Gaba Industries? I've been looking for you everywhere. I was in the boardroom. Renee, I know everything, so don't pretend. And Mark was looking for you, so go and see him right away. Hey, Polly. It's nothing. See, must I enjoy the coffee? Thanks. Sir. Benny, come in. Shut the door behind you. You've been working very closely with Joe ever since you joined them. Mm -hmm. All that is about to change. Be working with me in the next few months. Okay. I've just taken up a criminal case. Murder, attempted murder, and assault. We'll go interview them in remand. Join me in the parking lot in the next five minutes. Pick whatever you need. Okay. And Rene? Yes. Please call in Joe and Elsie. Okay. You asked to see me? Yes, where is Joe? Here. Good. Um, I've just told Elsie that uh, I have taken up a criminal case pro bono. The clients are still in remand. Some other case, so there's no bail. I'm off to interview them in remand. Um, do you need any help? No, I'll be taking Renee. I think she needs uh, the experience thing now. Thank you. Joe, I'm handing this over to you. The case is in two months. You will sit second chair. Since I'll be busy preparing for the murder case, I 
want you to do a proper research on it. Sure thing. You, LZ, have two cases tomorrow. A deposition and a healing. Yes, I'm almost done with the preparation. Right. I um, put in a reminder in my inbox. I'd like to be present at the deposition because the client is very important to this farm. Will do. That will be all. In the matter of uh, the Republic versus uh, Dennis Okot, Maurice Kanyuto and Paul Njomo are the prosecution and defense. Ready? Yes, my lord. Yes, your honor. <clears throat> okay, any opening statements? Yes, your honor. The mob justice culture is growing in our country. People deciding they can take the law into their own hands. People who decide that they can burn, stone, and kill anyone they believe to have committed a crime. Many innocent people have lost their lives at the hands of the mob, who have decided to become the prosecutor, the judge, and the executor. Your Honor, the mob is basically performing the job of the police, the judiciary, and the prison system. It is through this mob justice system that Tom Coco lost his life. It is through the very same system that Voje David's speech is impaired. Your Honor, mob justice has become mob injustice taking and destroying people's lives at will. Today we have the ringleaders of mob justice, an injustice movement that took away the life of an innocent man. Your Honor, we need to put an end to this mob justice system that robs citizens of their right to a fair trial, the right to be heard and to be proved innocent or guilty in a court of law. Your Honor, today I shall prove to the court that these three orchestrated the murder of Tom Coco, as well as the assault and attempted murder of Voje David. Bring leaders from a group of about 20 to 30 people. The prosecution comes with only three. A court could have been going in to save Voji. Morris could have been trying to calm the crowd to help Tom. How can we tell for sure who is who in a crowd of about 30 rowdy people on the rampage? Prosecution, are you ready with your first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call the investigating officer, John Kiprono. What religion are you? Christian. Christian, in that case, you swear by the Bible. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear by the Almighty God that the evidence you shall give in this court touching on matters in question is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. John Kiprono, please, describe to the court what happened on the second day of February this year. Yes, 
On that day I was in Langata investigating a case as a plain court policeman. Then I saw a BMW speed off and uh, ignoring the zebra crossing. What happened then? I subsequently mm. saw the BMW hit four pedestrians, among them a mother and her two twin daughters. Where was this? Right in the middle of the road. Mm. Carry on. The driver lost control and veered off and hit an electricity pole. Then I saw some people run to help uh, the mother and her daughters. Uh, from the driver's seat, a man covered with blood came out and started to walk about confused. And then uh, he proceeded to walk away. So, as a police officer, what did you do? I called the, the station to inform them of the accident and also to ask for backup traffic police. And then I heard Jomo shout, Get him! He's getting away! Njomo? Yes, uh, the second accused. Mm. Then all of a sudden, uh, a few young men ran towards the, the, the BMW and started beating up Tom. Some of the men who were beating him up uh, started taking his clothes. There was one who took his cape and ran away. And then there was one who was struggling with the watch. Let me take you back a bit. You said you had Njomo inside the crowd. Objection, Your Honor. Inside a crowd? Sustained. Rephrase the question. Thank you, Your Honor. You said you had Njomo tell the crowd to stop him. Yes, uh, I was standing next to him when he shouted and then ran to the crowd. And what happened to the passenger of the BMW? He ran to the scene trying to stop them, he tried to pull the men aside. Then half of the men turned on him and started beating him up. Did you intervene? In a few minutes, my partner had arrived. So we ran to the scene and identified ourselves as policemen. We tried to stop the crowd as my partner arrested some of the, some of the culprits. There was also a priest who was trying to calm the crowd. So you identified yourself as the police before you arrested them? Yes. And uh, despite that, uh, Njomo and Okot were still adamant and they were begging for Tom and Boji's blood. So you had them inside the crowd? Yes. Uh, sorry, not inside the crowd, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Can I uh, Sorry. Uh, so it was after you dispersed the crowd that you took the two to hospital? Yes, we rushed them to the nearest hospital. Where Tom succumbed to severe head injury? Yes, and uh, Vodja was lucky to survive, though he was badly injured. Thank you. That is all, Your Honor. Cross examination. Kiprono, how convenient that you witnessed the entire event from the accident to the so called mob justice. I was on the job. You will agree with me that uh, there were many people on the road at that time, considering it was in the morning. Time to go to church? Yes. Even when Tom and Voyager were being beaten, there were many people involved. About how many? Uh, I'd say about 25. So you'd say there was a large crowd? So, from a crowd of about 25 people, Yet, you spotted and arrested only the three. How were you able to clearly identify the three as the ringleaders? Yet, you say you saw many people beating up. Yes, uh, I identified them before we started the arrest. In your testimony, 
you say you saw a crowd come from the BMW and beat up Paul. Objection, Your Honor. He made it very clear in his testimony that he heard Njomo say, stop him, he's getting away. <coughs> Sustained. No further questions, Your Honor. Good. John Caprono, you may step down. Prosecutor, next witness. I left the church early. I left early because I had to officiate a fundraising. That was when you saw the crowd beating up Tom and Voje? Yes. What did you do? I ran in the midst of the crowd and tried to use my body to protect Tom from receiving more punches and more blows. And may the good Lord rest his soul in eternal peace. After I tried all this, it was all in vain. Then they turned to me and I received also some punches as well. Did you recognize any of the people who gave you a beating? Yes, Okot and Jomo. Actually, Jomo was very aggressive when he saw me try to talk to the crowd and calm them down. But he pushed me away and gave me some punches trying to silence me. When did the crowd calm down? It was after the plainclothes policemen came and arrested Jomo, Okot, and Morris, the three men on the defense stand. Thank you. That will be all, Your Honor. Cross examination. You remember for certain that uh, Jomo beat you up? Yes. You were receiving kicks and punches from. So you wouldn't say for certain that Morris or a court were beating, were in the crowd or beating up uh, either Tom or Voyager? No, I wouldn't. And I didn't say that I saw them Thank you. beat him up. The witness may stand down and thank you very much. Thank you. Calling your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call James Mogaka. What religion are you? Christian. Swear by the Bible. Do you swear by the Almighty God that the evidence you shall give in this court touching on matters in question shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. James, as you were driving along Langata Road on the Sunday in question, please tell the court what you witnessed. Oh, uh, well, I saw a man bleeding come out of a BMW that had just hit an electricity pole. The man was uh, in a daze because of the accident. Then I saw two men run and started to beat him up instead of helping him. Then one of them took off his watch while uh, as other people came uh, to uh, join to beat him up. Can you identify the men who are beating up the accident man? Yes. Go ahead. Um, well, I, I can only remember him. In fact, he was the one who took off his watch while he was being beaten. Thank you. That will be all, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. cross examination? You say you had already driven past the accident scene? Yes. So how were you able to see the accused beat up Tom? Well, I was driving and I could see that from the rear view mirror. Rear view mirror. You are able to see the, the accused through a car mirror which is about five, six, inches wide and says for certainty that it was him? Yes. It's the same way one can read a, a, a car's a number plate from the mirror. <laughs> no further question. Yeah. 
A court takes a lunch recess until 2 p.m. Good afternoon. How can I help you? I'm fine, thank you. I know I'm going and who I'm seeing. All right, then we'll carry on the conversation later on in the evening. Fine. Seven o'clock. We're meeting at seven. Okay. Hey, babes. It's just a client, of course. Working extra hours as always. Of course, I have to take care of my baby. For you. I'm going to lunch. Mmm. How sweet of you. You've got the perfect timing ever. I really do need some unwinding, and uh, I've really had a very tight week, actually. Why don't we set this up? There? It's okay. <laughs> what do you We're going to get us drinks. No worries, I'll go get somebody to get some from the shop. Okay? You're such a dare. The doctors informed me that your speech is so impaired due to your neck injuries. Would you like any form of help? Your Honor, due to his impaired speech, he's very slow in answering questions. I would like to ask the court's indulgence and patience as I examine him. And uh, for the same reason, please try to keep your questions basic. Yes, Your Honor. You were from church when you met Tom Coco. Yes. How do you know him? He's my neighbor. And he offered you a lift? Yes. How was his driving? It was good until he got distracted. As he was looking for just music CD, that's when he crossed the zebra crossing without looking. That is when he hit the four pedestrians. He tried to break and see off the road, but he still hit them. That's how he hit the electrical post. What happened? Well, I was unconscious for a while. Noise by a mob woke me up, roused me up, and upon opening my eyes, I couldn't believe. Because Tom was being beaten by a mob. He was bleeding badly. Upon seeing this grisly sight, what did you do? I came out of the car to go and try and help him. And what happened when you got out of the car? Another crowd came towards me and started to beat me up. Look around the court. Can you see them here? Yes. Please, identify them to the court. These two. Okot and Njomo. Yes. What about the third accused, Morris? Oh, I can't remember. After some beating, I slipped back to unconsciousness. I'm very sorry. It's okay. Thank you. That will be all, Your Honor. Any cross-examination? No cross, my lord. You may step down. Oh. Prosecution, any other witness? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call in Dr. Maina. Proceed. What was the reason behind that? I don't like being a bully. Instead, I'd like to fight back through the testimonies of the witnesses. are you and what do you think you're doing? I thought it's obvious I'm setting the table for lunch. This is my desk and this is an office. You do not set up picnics in offices. But Joe told Joe. me... Well, Elsie's telling you to pack up and leave. 
We haven't had lunch. Are you that dumb or are you just insulting me? If you're setting up for Joe, then set it up on his table. Just said it. I'm giving you 10 seconds to pack up and leave. Joe! Joe! Dr. Maina, you performed an autopsy on Tom Coco. Yes, my lord. Can you please tell the court the cause of death of Tom Coco? Yes. Tom Coco succumbed to severe head and brain injuries and the resultant hemorrhage. He also had a burst bladder. Were you able to ascertain the cause of these injuries? Yes. The head injury was a severe concussion and a deep cut. With the presence of the uh, glass particles, it was consistent with the impact of the road accident. However, the damage caused on the brain was due to the beatings he got. So was the burst blood. If Tom had been rushed to hospital, would he have had a fighting chance? Could he have survived? Tom would have, because his injuries were superficial initially. What about Voje, David? Voje survived, mainly because his vital organs were all intact and undamaged, with the exception of the pharynx, his throat region and the sound box. Will he be able to speak well again? We will have to perform a second surgery to relieve pressure on his sound box. With care and treatment, he will be able to gain most of his speech capacity. Thank you. Your Honor, I would like to submit the autopsy report of the deceased as well as the medical report of Tom Voje. Exhibit uh, accepted. Thank you, Yona. Defense. Dr. Miner, you mentioned that uh, Tom hit his head on the windscreen of the car. Yes. Were you able to establish the, uh, uh, the magnitude of the force with which he hit his head? No. So how do you know for certain that his head and possibly his brain was not damaged in that impact? The autopsy report did not uh, rule out the possibility that he could have uh, hit his head and had a head trauma. He was bleeding profusely when he got out of his car. If I had examined it before the beatings, I would have been more certain. So you're not absolutely certain. The testimonials also indicated that uh, he had uh, some kind of disorientation. Yes. So it is possible that his head was already damaged uh, in the accident uh, before the alleged mob attack. That could be a possibility, but I... So we can assume that he could have died from the accident before the alleged beating. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Mr. Marco, are you on a fishing mission? <sighs> no, Your Honor. Anyway, I have no further questions for this witness. Dr. Maina, you may step down. Defense. Any witnesses? I'd like to call the accused, starting with uh, Maurice Kenyatta. All right, Maurice, please step forward. Maurice, please tell the court where you are from on the, on the Sunday in question. Um, I was coming from the supermarket. So you were from the supermarket in Langata when you met the mob? Uh, objection. 
leading. Is it the accused or is it counsel who is testifying? All right, Your Honor, I'll rephrase. Oh, you had better. Maurice, please tell the court in your own words what transpired on your way from the supermarket. Yes, I was coming from the supermarket when I saw the mob beating up Tom and Boje. Yeah. Then yes. I saw, I also saw the four pedestrians who had been knocked down by a car lying on the road. And what was your immediate impulse? To get home. There was this mob that looked so charged and they looked like they had killed one of the men. So I... I decided to get closer and have a better view of what was happening, and that is when I got arrested. How did that happen? A man grabbed me by my trousers, uh, pulled me to the ground, and uh, put handcuffs on me. Uh, I tried to explain I was going home. I, I even showed him the shopping that I had from the supermarket. Of course they didn't listen. Uh, they, they arrested me, and I was put in the cells and later charged. <sighs> Take a look at these two documents. Yes. This is the receipt I got from the supermarket. And the other one is the lease agreement for the apartment I live in, which is just a stone throw away from the scene of accident. And would you like to submit these as evidence in court? Yes, my lord. My lord, I would like this marked as evidence Since I hear no objection, mark them accordingly. Your Honor, I have no further questions for this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree that you are from the supermarket. I also agree that you are on your way home. So if this crowd made you panic so much, why did you opt to pass through the rioting crowd in order to get home? Um. It was something stupid. Something stupid or something you are part of. If you are avoiding the crowd so much, why were you arrested in the middle of that rioting crowd? I wasn't in the middle of the crowd. Oh, yes. I forget. You were passing through the rioting crowd in order to get to the safety of your home. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I get it. That is all, Your Honor. <coughs> This is an office. Wear your manners. Get out. I'm looking for you. I don't care what you're doing. I just don't want you to do it in here. Wait at reception or at the parking lot. I will wait here. What's wrong? What's wrong? She's kicking me out. She's even thrown away our lunch. You have lost all respect for Chambers. Bringing all sorts of women in here like it's your house. Elsie, last time I checked, this is also my office. And you're setting up a picnic on my desk during working hours with no consideration for me, your colleague. This dumb blonde here this thinks this is a cheap whorehouse where she can come dressed as she wishes and because do I, as she wishes. Because I allowed her. Shut it! Just shut it, Joe. I have known you as an arrogant, self-centered jerk. But the world revolves around you and everyone else should move at your pace. Well, it's not like that, and it will not be like that anymore. Have some respect and decency in this office. I was at the stage waiting for a matatu when I saw a BMW moving very fast. It hit a mother and her babies. Then the driver came out of the the driver of the BMW came out of the car and started running away. So what did you do? Then I started shouting, "Stop him! Stop that man! Stop him!" The man was running away after killing four people in so broad you, daylight. So you were stopping him from escaping. Exactly, Your Honor. So where did all the other people come from? I don't know, but I suddenly saw them beating him up. So I rushed to I rushed there to help him, but the people didn't listen to me. 
Uh, what did the police do when they came? I heard the man say he's a police officer, but by that time I was already pushed into the middle of the crowd. That's when I was arrested and branded the ringleader. Thank you. How about the watch you stole? What? I did not steal any watch. There's a witness who said they saw you grab his watch. They also said they, they saw you as one of the first few people to get to Tom. You grabbed his watch and My continued God. to search his pocket. That's a lie. I did not take anything from him. Then what were you doing with your hands inside his pockets? No, I did not take his Rolex. Uh, Silence and court. Please, repeat what you just said. Repeat what you just said. Objection. There's no need for the witness to repeat. Your Honor, I need to ascertain that the co court had him clearly mention a Rolex. Information he would not have had unless he had stolen the same from the deceased. The court has already taken that statement into consideration. Let's move on. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. The defense? Mr. Mako? The defense calls upon Paul Njoma. Counsel, please inform your client that uh, he is under oath and should be honest. My client is well aware of it. You are arrested as one of the ringleaders. Why are you in the crowd that was beating up Tom and Budje? When I saw what they had done, killing four people on the spot, then I see him running away. I had to stop him. So you were stopping him from running away? Yes. Then people suddenly appeared from nowhere and started to beat them. What about the priests who claimed that you punched him? It was in self-defense. Why? He was holding me down. He wanted me to be arrested. I had seen the police covering Maurice, so I punched him, so he lets me go. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. When the priest was holding you down to be arrested, you were not at the center of the crowd that was beating up Tom or Voje? No. Mm. Then the priest came and pushed you into the center of the crowd? Yes. While you were being pushed to the center of this crowd that you would look like the ringleader, you were fighting with the priest to stay out of the crowd? Yes. I'd like to understand this. So, you were at the center of the crowd when you punched the priest? Yes. Whose crowd? Tom's or Voges? Voges. Voges, you say? Yes. I put it to you that you're a liar. Objection, you I'm not lying. I was on Voges' crowd. <laughs> the priest was in Tom's crowd. He was trying to assist the most injured. I'm assuming defense rest? Yes, my lord. All right. The court takes a 15 minutes tea recess. When you come back, we will listen to your final statements. The Republic of Kenya is not a banana republic where everyone is alone to themselves. No, Your Honor. We have set systems in place. The police, the judiciary, the penal system, which are meant to protect and offer justice to those who are wronged. However, we have hooligans 
who claim to offer instant justice, instant law enforcement to suspected offenders. Sometimes it doesn't take more than a shout, thief, thief, to have the mob beat up someone before they are accorded due justice and the constitutional right to be heard. It acts on mob hysteria. Mob justice. I like to call it mob injustice. Your Honor, there's a new breed of mob justice seekers who commit such acts, punishing to gain from it. Or is it just gaining from it while feigning punishment? Your Honor, an accident occurred due to the negligence of the driver. Onlookers, instead of assisting people involved in the accident, decided to attack the driver in order to steal from him. Tom's Rolex was gone in less than a minute. His designer cap stolen. His pockets were frisked while he received killer blows and punches which caused his bladder to burst, caused him head injury and hemorrhage. Your Honor, the mob killed Tom, almost killing Vojay. Your Honor, the court must send a message to the people that you cannot beat up, sentence, and punish someone just because you're in a crowd and think you will get away with it. Murder by a mob or an individual is still murder and punishable under the law. The same law that every citizen must uphold. I agree with the State Council, Michel Zoh. Let's send a message to the justice seekers out there. People who have lost faith or have never had any faith in the systems the government has put in place to protect its citizens. We need to set a precedent that such cannot be allowed where we have systems that work, but let us send that message to the guilty parties. Maurice, Jomo and Okot are not the guilty ones here. This is obviously a case of mistaken identity. The police settled on the three because they were the first trio that they could lay their hands or handcuffs on. Maurice was heading home. Okot and Jomo was stopping a drunken driver from escaping after hitting and killing four pedestrians. Has the prosecutor proved beyond reasonable doubt that Morris, Joma, and a court actually murdered Tom and attempted to murder Voy? The answer is a resounding no. No. And that is reason enough to free the three accused before they too become innocent victims. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Councils. Judgment is set for the 15th of this month. In the matter of the Republic versus Denis Court, Maurice Kanyoto and Paul Njomo on the charge of murder, 
attempted murder, assault causing grievous bodily harm. The judgment of the court is as follows. Dennis O'Court, I find that you were properly identified by a policeman, a man of God, and a motorist as being amongst the inciters of the mob. The court finds you guilty of all the charges and sentences you to life imprisonment and six strokes of the cane. Paul Njomo, two witnesses testified to your participation in the unlawful activities of the mob especially in relation to the attack on Vosges. The court thus acquits you on the charge of murder, but finds you guilty on the counts of attempted murder and assault, occasioning grievous bodily harm, and hereby sentences you to 10 years imprisonment. Maurice Canuto. The court finds that there is not sufficient evidence to sustain any of the four charges against you. You are a victim of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. You are hereby acquitted. Now, may this be a lesson to all those who attack and injure people in the same mob justice. There are mechanisms of seeking justice, and today's ruling has just proved so. The court is adjourned. Good job. I didn't have much to go on. When you win some, you lose some. <laughs>